All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Danganronpa. My name is Burning Earth Chris, and I'm going to be your pilot tonight. So, in the last couple of episodes, we got a lot of information about uh, um, about the second killing that's happened in, the, in uh, Hope's Peak here. So, uh, we're going to do a bit more investigating. Uh, we did get quite a bit of information about uh, Genocide Jack from Byakuya, surprisingly. But I'm not convinced that Genocide Jack might actually be the killer in this case, and there's a couple of reasons as to why that is, but uh, I'll go over them as we get through the episode here. So, um, let's see. Where should I go next? I think I'll go to the scene of the crime first. Oh, what do you want? Da -da 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 -da! If Fumi has discovered evidence revealing the identity of the culprit. I feel as if... Another stat increased for me. Evidence? What did you find? <laughs> I cannot reveal that just yet. That's it. I'm sure of it. But I guarantee that what I found will see the killer's breath from his lungs. Are you sure about that? <laughs> oh yeah. Miss Ludenberg thinks she would have something worthwhile, too! Really? What did she see? Well, it would seem... She refused to tell me. It's like when the girl bullies the boy she likes, right? Right? Okay, so where's Celeste now? The White House by the dorms. She was there, but at the same time, not there. Huh? What's it gonna be? Uh, well, first... So, something I did notice, folks. In the pictures depicting Genocide Jack's murders, there were scissors embedded in the victim's, uh... Um, I think their hands and their neck? But if we look at Chihiro, that's not the case here. They're just tied up. Like, they were tied up that way in the Genocide Jackmers, but there's no scissors in the wrists or anything like that. So I wonder... I wonder how they could have done that. I wonder if... It, it does make me wonder if Genocide Jack is actually the killer in this case. Alright, but anyway. I can feel the life draining out of my own body. The dead body. Chihiro's dead body. Yeah, alright. Kyoko, have you uncovered anything new since I came in here? Indeed. Generally speaking. However... But I have to get going. I have something unrelated to take care of. Something besides the investigation? What could be more important than this? What is it? Well. Nothing you need to worry about. Just concentrate on the murder. But... So then... Before I go, let me give you one piece of advice. Examine Chihiro's body one more time. Thoroughly. Also, her handbook is missing. You might want to determine its whereabouts. Okay. Both are good calls. Goodbye. That's it. I'll be praying for your success. With that, Kyoko turned and left the girls' locker room. Well, I guess I'll take another look at the body, then. And Chihiro's handbook is missing? That's worth worrying about, for sure. Chihiro's e-handbook added to the truth bullet section of our handbook. Alright. Well, let's take a look. Kyoko said I should examine the body one more time. I know she said thoroughly, but I do have my limits. My... Better give it a shot anyway. Let's see. Jihiro's hands are bound with what looks like some kind of rope. The rope was used to prop her up in a kind of crucifix position. Huh? This rope has a plug. This isn't a rope at all. But the more I think about it, the more that's not the only thing that concerns me. 
Chihiro's fatal injury was the blow to the head. Which means someone struck her in the head in order to kill her. That's right. There's the issue of her being suspended in the fatal blow. At first I didn't see any reason to think too much about either of them. Yeah! See, here it is. Okay, so... But seeing them again after looking through the genocide jackpot, something's not quite right. See, there, folks, there are scissors stuck in the the neck. No, not the neck. It looks like it looks like the back of the neck, but it's definitely the head, the armpits, and the wrists of the victims. What does this all mean? Add to the truth bullet section of the handbook. Although well, one thing most likely to tie all these mysteries together is the true nature of the rope that was used to suspend Shihiro. And to figure that out, there's a certain place I need to revisit and look over again. Plus, it might help to look at the Genocide Jack file one more time. If Chihiro was killed by a blow to the head, then it might not be Genocide Jack after all. Because didn't Genocide Jack kill her victim and kill her or his victims with, um... Who am I kidding? It's her. It's it's gotta be Toko. There's there's no question in my mind. He, but yeah, didn't Genocide Jack kill her victims with knives and scissors? All right. Should I? Is there anything more I can do here? Okay, not quite right. What does this all mean? Can't stop thinking about the rope. Certain place needs to revisit and look over again. Look at that case file one more time, too. There's a big blood stain on the dumbbell of the on the floor. The Munakuma file said that the fatal injury was caused by a blow to the head. This dumbbell had to be the murder weapon. Alright. Still more. Uh, what else do I have to check, then? Oh, do I have to talk with Mondo and Sakura? Let me talk with them real quick. This also bothers me, folks. Dude had a real complex about being weak. You heard your hero talk about it, right? All I need to get stronger. I do remember she said that more than once. Sure did, which I guess explains the trip down here. But did she really need to get stronger that badly? You already mentioned it, but she was a girl after all. Most girls aren't all that strong. I don't know, man. Haven't really thought about that stuff. Chihiro's complex. Where did it come from? Something bothers me about how Mondo said this, too. Because in the first case... In the first case, he was like, If I find the, whoever murdered so uh, if Sayaka, he's freaking dead. And then Makoto asks, What if it was a girl? And then Mondo was like, Let me get back to you on that. So... I'm starting to wonder. I'm starting to wonder about about Mondo's involvement in this. But okay, let's talk with Sakura. Damn. Jihiro's presence here was especially weak. Her body and her soul. No forgiveness. The Tark is such a helpless being. It's unforgivable. What a wretched beast to do such a thing. I. I cannot forgive this! Yeah, I don't blame you. The word bloodlust is written on the wall in blood. Just like in all those other Genocide Jack cases. At every crime scene, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. Bloodstained poster, the blood is the most noteworthy part, but... The big breasted swimsuit model is pretty noticeable too. A girl's locker room doesn't seem like the kind of place you'd find something like this. You know, I was gonna comment on that too. All right, let's get out of here then. Let me take a look at the boys' locker room because uh, Biakia wouldn't let me go in here earlier, so. 
now that I actually had this opportunity. Let's take a look at it. Oh, the, the poster got switched. This poster. It's a popular boy band called Tornado. Somehow it doesn't quite seem to fit in the boys' locker room. But wait, that reminds me. The poster in the other locker room is... That's right. There's definitely something strange about this. In the boys' locker room, there's a poster of a popular boy band. In the girls' locker room, there's a poster of a big-breasted swimsuit model. Could the posters have been switched? But if they were, why? What reason would anyone have? Maybe I should talk to someone who knows a little more about the locker rooms. Did someone try to set this up as uh, the girls' locker room is like the boys or something? Kind of like the Sa how Saika switched the nameplates? That's that's kind of what I'm guessing here, folks. Alright, uh, anything else? Oh, what's this? Oh, I didn't see this. A strange stain on the carpet. What is it? Alright, nothing else here, I think. Let me check out the pool, see if there's anything else in here that I need to check out. Anything else here? I don't think so. Take a look at the locker. There's anything in here. Guess not. Okay. Well, that. Let me. Can I go over here? Is there anything else over here worth checking out? I don't think so. All right. Let's lead the locker room then. Should I ask Kafumi? Even though I really don't want to. All right. Kafumi's discovered evidence revealing the identity of the culprit. I feel as if another stat increase. Evidence, what'd you find? Nothing yet. Guarantee what I found will steal the killer's breath from his lungs. Are you sure? Oh yeah. Really? What did she see? Hmm, alright. Now Celeste is by the warehouse, right? Still more. Okay, let me take a look then. Boy's locker room card reader, but the door is unlocked now, so it's kind of pointless. Is there still more for me to check out? Pool related items on the shelf. Don't seem to be any kind of clues left. This flotation donut does not hold any clues. What about the Gatling gun? Nothing to do with the case. Alright then, let's go... Maybe talk with uh, Mondo and... Uh, Sakura one more time. Real complex. else is there to investigate? Uh, hold on a second, folks. Take a look at this. Okay, cause a deathless blow to the head with a blunt object, killed instantly. Shihira wanted to get stronger, she declined several invitations from Sakura and Aoi. They used the locker room later night to avoid them. Despite this, Shihiro had said that she desired help with her efforts. She may have been someone in the locker room the night she was murdered. Dumbbell found on the floor of the girls' locker room had a significant amount of blood in it. Shihiro had told anyone willing to listen that she was wanting to get stronger. Some assume that due to her inferiority complex about being weak, she admired strength more than anything else. That might be significant later, folks. 
unlock a card. <laughs> yeah, to unlock a locker room, you need to swipe your e-handbook over your card reader. Male student handbook for the boys' locker room, female student for the girls. Not possible for two people to enter at the same time. Lending someone your handbook is a violation of the school regulations, but borrowing someone's is not. The handbook of each student has at its side is placed in the mailbox in the main hall. One of the handbooks found in the main hall have been broken, which is apparently a rare occurrence. Junko and Saika's handbooks both seem to still work, so it is assumed that the broken handbook is Leon's. However, Monokuma claims that it's very unlikely that Leon's handbook would have broken. Suspected genocide jack victims include Ken Harada, Tetsuhiro Honda, and Shoji Gaku, among countless others. Killed in the same way and mounted to a nearby wall, the word bloodlust was found at the scene of each crime written in blood. Profiling indicates the tale was likely a student suffering from a split personality. Carpet in the boys' locker room found with a blackish stain on it. Blood found on the poster in the girls' locker room. The poster featured a big breasted supermodel popular among young boys. Meanwhile, the poster in the boys' locker room was for a boy band popular for teenage girls. Jihiro's handbooks is not found under corpses and has apparently gone missing. Jihiro's body has been suspended and her hands has been round with some kind of rope. Her fatal injury was a blow to the head. Okay, so... Now what do I do? Oh, the blood stain. Yeah, let's check this out. Can only been caused by Jihiro's murder. Is that all? Have I been in here yet? Leads out to the pool. Okay, no, that's the pool. Okay, good to know. Is there anything else I can do with Jihiro's body? Hmm. Certain place I need to look. Okay, this is new. You spend a lot of time exercising in the girls' locker room, right, Sakura? Of course. I've used it nearly every day since it opened up. Sometimes Hina and I use it together. Okay, then let me ask you something. Do you think the posters of the boys' and girls' locker rooms could have been switched? I'm sorry. I can't really say. I've never really paid any attention to the posters. I see. However... But there is something that's been bothering me about the locker room. You see, I like to drink a little protein coffee every time I finish exercising. We have protein coffee? Mm. In the warehouse. It's not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass of it after exercising. Anyway, the other day I spoke to the carpet in the girls' locker room and it left a stain! A stain? Okay. That might be the stain in the, in the boys' locker room carpet. I don't see any stain on the carpet now. Of course. Exactly. I noticed it earlier. The stain has disappeared. I can only assume someone came along and cleaned it up. But still, isn't it unusually clean? As if there was never a stain here to begin with. Good call! Okay. Alright, I think I can get out now. Let me investigate that stain one more time, see if there's anything new, and then I'll head to the library and maybe confront Byakuya. Strange stain. What is it? We still don't know. Well, I think I know what it is, but uh, Makoto here is uh, poor kid's clueless. <laughs> That's not nice, Chris. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to the library. Having fun isn't hard when you've got a library card. Who remembers that jingle? Uh, where'd Seto Kaiba, I mean Byakuya, go? Oh yeah, that's right, he left, he left to do whatever. Byakuya grabbed that one thing from over here and put it over there. Sure is dark over there. Ooh, 
Wait a minute. If I go back... Thick layer just the top of the desk. Some kind of clue here. Guess not. Oh. What about this lamp? The lamp won't turn on. It's not plugged in. The lamp's cord isn't long enough to reach the outlet from here. But last time I saw it, it was definitely on and was definitely right here. Byakuya was using an extension cord. But there's no extension cord here now. I wonder if... Library desk lamp added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Did Byakuya tamper with the crime scene? Is that... that's the vibe I'm getting here, folks. Still more. Okay, let's take a look. Packed tight with books, but looking at it. Maybe there's some kind of clue here. Guess not. Aww. Anything over here? Some kind of clue here. Nope. Probably not over here either, but I think it's worth a look. Nope, okay. Oh, got a Monokuma token at least. What about this? Stop functioning as a- yeah, that's right. It's just the letter that said, Hope Speak stopped functioning as a school. And what's more, it didn't even happen recently. It closed down over a year ago. The mastermind probably took over the abandoned school in order to start this killing game. Which explains why there aren't any other students here, because it's not a real school. And then there's these serious issues that forced the school... Excuse me. To close down in the first place. Is there any connection to between that and what's happening to us now? Alright. I think we've seen this dialogue before, so I'll skip through it. Okay. Back inside the archive... Wooden box is empty. Extension court was in there before. The report on a presidential assassination, it's really intriguing. But if it means I become a target, no, nope. I'll leave it where it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh There's something over there, but I can't seem to grab it. Oh, it's a- oh, it's a camera, okay. I don't know if any of you folks can see that. But okay. I know it was around here somewhere. Okay, looking at the, for the Genocide Jack case file. It's gone! Did someone take it out of the archive? But the only one who would do something like that... I can't think of anyone but Byakuya. All right. Byakuya, you got some explaining to do, my friend. Let's see if I can go find him. Uh, let's take a look at the map. Right, Chihiro's in the warehouse. Oops. No sign of Byakuya, so... Alright, then I'll head to the dining hall next. Talk with, uh... Hina, and then I'll head to the warehouse to talk with Celeste. How's it going, Hina? Oh, Hina, how's Toko doing? Hmm. <sighs> Sorry, folks. 
same as four, she won't come out and she just keeps on mumbling something about Genocide Jack. <laughs> so I just left her there. <laughs> That's nice. You left her? <laughs> My head was all swimming and I was getting pretty hungry. Yeah! Oh, but don't worry, I'm gonna head back as soon as I'm done eating. Toko's not exactly pleasant, but I'm still worried about her. Speaking of which, what are you eating? Huh? A donut, of course. Of course. <sighs> There's two things I'm sure got created. Outer space and donuts. <laughs> really? Hmm. I bet Shahira would have liked to eat more donuts. Maybe that was her one big regret. I should have tried to spend more time with her. Come to think of it, who did she spend time with? That's a good question. Well... She was a little bit strange. She didn't really hang out with the other girls much. It was like... Like she was trying to keep her distance from us. Actually, Sakura said something similar to that. Even though you and her invited Chihiro to exercise with you, she always refused. Yeah, totally. It's true. And it wasn't just us, either. It was like she stayed away from all the girls. Was she just shy? I'm doubtful of that, Makoto. Mm. I don't know. She talked to the boys all the time. Isn't it kind of shy and kind of weird to be shy around your own sex, but totally fine with the opposite sex? Ah. Oh, wait. Maybe. Maybe she was used to guys spoiling her. The law says you can't judge a book by its cover, right? You think so? I never really saw her as that kind of girl. Curiouser and curiouser. But no, I think I know where this plot is going, folks. Is there anything to investigate here? Oh, the knife from Sakura uh, from Sayaka's case is still missing. I keep getting Sakura and Sayaka confused. I'm sorry, folks. But yeah, that's interesting to know. But uh, no time to investigate that now. Let's get moving. So Chihiro spent time with mostly boys. That's good to know. Uh, where's the warehouse? Okay, this way. Hi, Celeste. Let's talk. Celeste, what are you doing here? <laughs> this warehouse is amazing. It has absolutely everything one might need to live a full life. From food to clothes to towels, there's an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but have you found anything related to the case? Most unfortunate. I knew you were going to ask me that. I thought talking about the warehouse itself might misdirect you, but I see it was pointless. And you did buy something? <laughs> Very well. I will tell you, and only you. Actually... Last night, I saw her here. Chihiro was in the warehouse. Oh! That's significant! Really? Indeed. This was right before night time. Hmm? What are you doing out this late? Oh, um, I was just... Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. <sighs> She set the jacket into her bag like in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. Yes, indeed. I assumed she was merely stocking up to go exercise in the morning, but... It would appear she ignored the nighttime rule and headed directly to the girls' locker room. If she hadn't broken our rule, none of this ever would have happened. <laughs> you get what you deserve, I suppose. Hey, that's a cold thing to say! So apparently, she went to the girls' locker room late at night in order to exercise without anyone knowing. 
But the strange thing is, there was no trace of a track jacket or duffel bag so that uh, said she saw Shihiro carrying. Which would mean the killer would have gotten rid of it somehow. Celeste's account added to the Troop Bullet section of our handbook. What? Um, so, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. Shall we just plunge right in? Oh, have we got all the clues already? It's the moment you've all been waiting for! The class trial! Oh, okay. Let's go. You remember where to meet, right? Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon! Begin the class trial, or... It's about to begin. The red door is right through here. Well, okay, folks. Next time, the second class trial. Thank you all for watching. See you next time. If you like this video, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash burningearthyeffects, or consider supporting us at the links below. Thanks for watching.